Let's bring in three members of Parliament now to discuss this uh, latest developments on C-14. Uh, from the foyer of the Commons, I'm joined by Kevin Lamaru, who's the Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader. We are also joined this evening by Michael Cooper, the Justice Critic for the uh, Official Opposition Conservatives, and by Mathieu Dubé, who is the Deputy House Leader for the NDP. Good to see you all. Great to be here. Uh, thanks for being here. Mr. Lamaru, let, let me start with you. Uh, what is the government's expectation now uh, from, from the Senate? How, how does the government view the weight of this vote uh, from the House of Commons and, uh, and how it expects the Senate to respond to this vote? Well, we're, we're encouraged in the, in the sense that uh, we're at a, a point in which uh, we had a, a positive vote to today, which now brings C-14 back to, uh, to the Senate. Uh, we're anticipating that the Senate will recognize that the House did have the opportunity to go over it. In particular, uh, the government was able to, to accept some of the thoughts that the Senate had, and we applaud them on their efforts and work. Uh, and we were able to, to send it back uh, not that long ago, and uh, we're now waiting for the Senate to kind of assess where they believe the legislation is at, and if they're comfortable with it, uh, then Canadians will have uh, assisted dying legislation uh, now then become law. Okay, M Mr. Cooper, uh, tell me about the Conservative vote today. As, as I watched, the Conservatives had, uh, voted to uh, pass the bill uh, while rejecting also that key Senate amendment about who should have the right to... Uh, an assisted death and when. Uh, so does that mean you, you believe and your party believes this bill is the right bill to deal with assisted suicide? The, or medically assisted right. death, I want to be clear on the terms. Our, well, in our caucus, it was a free vote, and uh, you could certainly see that reflected in, in the numbers in the sense that uh, uh, you know a fair number of members supported the motion and a number of uh, members did not. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I did uh, ultimately support the motion, even though I voted against the, the bill before it went to the Senate. And I did it on the basis of the fact that uh, we have to deal with the bill that came back from the Senate. Uh, there were amendments. Some amendments, I thought, uh, were an improvement from the bill that came out of the House. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the amendments, the Joyel Amendment, was an amendment that caused me uh, considerable concern in the fact that it would open up physician-assisted dying uh, in, a, in a way that is far too permissive. So ultimately what the government's motion did was keep in place uh, many of the amendments that I thought were an improvement uh, and removed the Joyel Amendment and reinstated the, the language that had been in the bill. So on that basis, I supported uh, the government's motion. Okay. Uh, Mathieu Dubé, um, how would you characterize what, what the government's done today with uh, these recommendations that came, the key one, on on expanding uh, the people who would be in, entitled to ask for a medically assisted death. Uh, that's been rejected uh, by the government. So how would you describe what happened today? Well, let's be clear, at the outset we would have preferred to see uh, many of these amendments uh, actually adopted in the House of Commons. I think at the end of the day, if the government was sincere in its willingness to be nonpartisan about such a uh, emotional and personal issue, uh, that's what would have happened. At, but at the same time, the Senate came through with many interesting amendments and we wanted to see those amendments adopted, like the one that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're certainly disappointed that that didn't happen. We attempted uh, to amend the motion that the government put forward to uh, see the adoption of the Senate amendments that we believe would make the bill constitutional. And it's not just us, it's certainly all the experts that we've been hearing from that believe the same thing. So what do you think the Senate should do now? Well, we'll wait and see. It's up to them at the end of the day, but I think the government's mind is clearly made up, uh, so we'll see what, what the Senate decides to do. But uh, I think the big challenge we have is, is that the government really wasn't willing to listen to uh, opposition uh, uh, amendments, and unfortunately, I think we're going to see a situation now where people who are suffering are going to have to challenge this bill in court, uh, but we'll wait and see what happens. Okay, that's, well, l let me pick up on that. Mr. Lamaru, uh, some senators are suggesting uh, this evening that they could push the government and now to refer the bill to the Supreme Court, in fact, to get a, a reference on its constitutionality. Um, why is the government unwilling to do that when it, it seems likely that some, some group, uh, someone or some group will once this bill becomes law? I just don't really think it's necessary, uh, Peter. If I can just pick up on the idea of the original legislation when it came uh, to second reading and how it has actually uh, changed in, in, different, in different forms, uh, whether it was uh, you know, unanimous uh, party uh, agreements at the committee stage uh, where we actually accepted and uh, 
passed amendments through uh, to actually what the Senate was able to, to accomplish and recognize that there were some ways in which we can prove it. In essence, what has happened is we now have a legal framework that allows for assisted uh, medical or medical assisted uh, dying. Uh, at the same time, we're not saying that the debate has to end. This is going to be a discussion that Canadians will have uh, going forward. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about, for example, palliative care uh, and what roles uh, other jurisdictions need to play on but it. The, but the biggest uh, challenge, as you know, uh, the, the biggest uh, uh, level of either disagreement or consternation is around the size of the class of people who could apply for a medically assisted death. It seems to me that's the one that's, that's likely to, to be the subject of a court challenge. And, and if, that, if that's the case, I guess a lot of people wonder why the government wouldn't go ahead and, and do that itself and get an opinion from the court rather than have itself taken to court. Yeah, but you'll get legal opinions on either side. And if government was to take action or take something or refer something to the Supreme Court on every time you got a, a legal opinion on some important uh, law, uh, I don't think it would, it would be appropriate. It's just uh, we okay. believe the legal framework's there. It, it will stand the, the test of the charge. Mr. Cooper, is there, is there still a case to be made for taking this to, as a reference to the Supreme Court? Well, look, uh, I think that uh, the Supreme Court in the Carter decision said that Parliament was owed a high degree of deference in uh, responding legislatively. And uh, in terms of the parameters of the Carter decision, uh, they gave Parliament a fair amount of room uh, in, in terms of uh, crafting legislation. I believe that the legislation uh, satisfies the parameters of, of Carter. And, uh, and I believe that the legislation uh, is charter uh, compliant. And so uh, I, 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 I'm not against necessarily uh, referring it to the Supreme Court, but I don't agree that it's necessary either. Uh, uh, look, this legislation is going to be challenged. It's going to be challenged uh, from some who would like it to be more permissive and from others who would like it to be uh, more restrictive. And uh, that's just the reality of living in Canada with okay. a Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Mr. Dubé, what about that? Uh, why is it the government's responsibility to, do, to uh, seek a court reference uh, when, as it says, and it said repeatedly, this is, this is kind of an ongoing dialogue and it will go where it's going, and I suppose it's leaving that to someone else to challenge it? Well, the idea here is to get it right. I mean, the responsibility of a lawmaker is not to kick off a debate in society. The fact is, is that that debate has been already ongoing, and the Supreme Court of Canada had a, a historic decision with the Carter decision. A committee, an all, a parliamentary committee, was struck. And coming out of that process, we've heard experts now who, after the bill was tabled in the House, have told us that this bill is unconstitutional. So if the government is so confident in it, the constitutionality of the bill, they should refer to the Supreme Court. And just to pick up on Mr. Lamoureux's comments, you know, we're not saying we should do this for every single piece of legislation, but this is, as the government has itself said many times, something that is historic. It's a big deal. It's important that we get it right, right. the first time. And quickly to all of you now, quick, quick answer if I can. Uh, so, you know, Mr. Mr. Lamoury, you heard from a, a joint committee that was, was interested in seeing the class broaden. You've now heard from a Senate, uh, the Senate saying, with their amendment, saying the class of people uh, uh, who are permitted to ac access medically assisted dying should be larger than the government is saying. So I guess, uh, w what's the point of, of having a Senate uh, review this kind of legislation, uh, momentous as it is, and it looks at ways of improving that legislation, makes this key recommendation, and the government ignores it? I, th I think that there are, we need to look at the fact that the Senate made a number of uh, or had a number of ideas and thoughts and shared it no, with us. But, the, but that's, the big, we, that's the big one they recommended and that's the one the government has said no to. That's the one that the government, well the government already has a fairly good sense. It's been debated uh, through, uh, for hours inside the House. We had a good sense in terms of the, the framework. We believed in the framework. Uh, the Senate did uh, play a valuable role in terms of making some modifications to, to the legislation okay. ultimately. I, I see that as a good thing. Mr. Mr. Cooper, was the Senate role valuable here? Uh, I think that the Senate's role uh, is valuable uh, in the sense that they uh, had a, uh, an important debate. They put forward a, a number of uh, amendments. Now uh, the House of Commons ha has voted uh, on those amendments, and now it uh, goes back to the Senate. And I would hope that the Senate, after putting forward their amendments and now receiving the response from the House, will uh, have an up or down vote and respect the uh, the decision of the people's house. All right, final word to you, Matsu Dubé. Uh, the Senate input uh, worth having here or not? 
Well, I certainly think uh, they played an important role and they certainly brought a thoughtful aspect to the debate. But at the end of the day, what we hope to see and what we didn't see was the government in the House of Commons, in the elected House of Commons, listening to opposition amendments on an issue like this where you have to put partisanship aside. All right. Thank you all for your time tonight, gentlemen. We'll continue to follow where uh, this story goes next. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Beatrice.